there's a spot right up here in the middle. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, we have UCF coach Johnny Donkins and Darius Perry and Darren Green Jr. We will have coach give his statement first and then we'll open up for questions inside the room and then we'll shoot it over to the Zoom. Uh, for those of you on the Zoom, if you want to raise your hand, we will uh, call upon you individually. But coach, we'll start with you. Well, I think it was, a, it was a great game. You know, it's always expected when you're playing your rival. And uh, we've had two really good games this year versus, you know, USF. Uh, the first game, I mean, it was, they did an outstanding job. I thought the second game, we responded. And this game right here, I thought both teams, you know, played very well. And, and we were fortunate to come out with the win. All right, for those inside the room, if you want to raise your hand, we'll get a microphone over to you for questions. Hey, Darius, could you just walk us final possession where you hit that three to make it 60 to 58? Um, Coach Dawkins just drew up a play in the timeout, and uh, that was the shot I was supposed to take in, after the timeout. Uh, my teammates had confidence in me to knock it down, so um, that's what I did. What kind of adjustments did you guys feel like you had to do in that first half to come back and tie it up towards the end, get the momentum at halftime? Um, I think we really emphasized on the rebounding uh, discrepancy. You know, they, they were leading in the Warner boards early on, and then we had to fix that in the second half and then also just getting stops. I don't think we were getting a lot of stops in the first half. The second half, we started to get two, three, four stops in a row, and that's what really helped us take the lead and break it open for a second. Looking down at the stat sheet, uh, rebounding battle is 49 to 36. Talk about what it means to come out with a victory like that, even though the rebound titles were very different. Well, it just showed that our guys have a lot of heart. You know, I, I thought they kept fighting through through that adversity. They kept fighting through uh, the fact that they were relentless on the boards, and our guys just kept battling, kept battling, and we made the plays we needed to make. I thought, I thought we were better in the second half. You know, rebounding the basketball, especially uh, not giving them as many second and third shot opportunities. They had a few, but not as nowhere as many as they had in the first half. So I thought we did a better job making that adjustment at halftime. And our guys just kept battling, but we knew the type of game it was going to be. I mean, UCF does a really good job. They're a big physical team, and uh, they play that way for 40 minutes. So you, you have to embrace it, and and uh, you have to make plays. And I thought our guys did. Any other questions for the room? All right, we'll go to the Zoom. Uh, Trace. Coach, uh, you had to grab your heart a little bit watching that last uh, couple of shots by South Florida, a little deja vu from Sunday. What were you feeling there as you watched them take their shots? Exactly what you just said right there. Not again. <laughs> but no, you know, you just you just want your guys just to, to be in position, uh, try to challenge shots like that at the end. I thought we did, you know, and, and you never know. Sometimes, you know, guys will make shots, you know, under those circumstances. We we're fortunate tonight where, uh, where the two shots that they had, they didn't go. But I thought our guys played their hearts out. And, and there's no better way than winning with a defensive stop to end the game. And I, I love our guys for that. We talk about that all the time. You know, we want to win on defense. And uh, that was a chance for us to show that we could do it and we were able to, to accomplish it. A question for Darren. Darren, you had 11 first half points. No points in the second half. What changed defensively from South Florida in the second half on you? Um, they definitely started top blocking me, um, not allowing me to come off screens, which I have to do a better job of that, um, you know, set my man up and things like that. But, you know, we we got depth on our team that, you know, they made up for it on the offensive end. And uh, Darius, you split with Memphis this year. What is this team, your team, going to have to do to come out with a victory on Friday night? Um, I think we just have to play harder than them. I think they're a really scrappy team that plays really, really hard. And, um, it's going to be a war who, who plays harder that's going to decide who wins the game. So I think that's all we have to do is play harder and smarter than them. Thank you. All right, Eric Lopez. Uh, for Darren and then Darius, talk about Mbake and the impact he had inside. He had five blocks, eight rebounds. How big is it to have a guy like that behind you to clean up any guys that might come to and challenge the rim? Uh, it's, Mbake is a big part of our team, especially on the defensive end. Um, you know, we get beat off the drive, but we, you know, we almost don't worry with Mbake down there because we know, like you say, he had five blocks a day, and he's done it multiple times for us. So, you know, it's it's good to have Mbake down there. I, I think the same thing. He's a huge part of the team. He makes a big impact when he's on the floor. Uh, he does a lot of things that may not even show up in the stat sheet, honestly. 
Uh, so, you know, it's a blessing really to have him on the team. I think he's one of the better bigs in the country defensively. There is. You got a couple baskets early in that second half. Did that get you kind of going your rhythm there uh, in that second half offensively? Um, it was the stops for me. I, I like the defensive end. And I think we played some really good defense that led to me be, to be able to get those uh, buckets early in the first, in the second half. Coach, uh, you had seven turnovers in the first half, but only three in the second half. Was it just a case of the guys, you know, settling down after a first half, playing that first game of a tournament, or what changed there to protect the basketball in the second half? You know, I think that was it. You know, I thought some of the turnovers we had, they definitely were unforced. I thought we were kind of kind of rushing. We were forcing some situations out there on the floor. We weren't letting it come to us. I thought in the second half, we kind of let the game come to us. So the ball flowed a little easier. Guys weren't pressing with the basketball to make plays. And, uh, and I think we had a better rhythm because of that. Quick turnaround now. You got Memphis you're familiar with. Take us through the process now between now and tomorrow and getting ready for Memphis. Well, the first thing we want to do is have our guys get off their feet. Uh, that's that's important. Uh, we'll stay here and catch you know catch our women's game. At least try to watch the first half. Have our players do that to, to support our women's team and and their game coming up. And then we'll go back as a staff. We'll start you know watching more tape. Uh, one of our one of our uh, one of my assistants has already has the scout, so he's already prepared. So we'll start going over that. You know, continuing to kind of learn more about them as I watch more this evening. Then we'll bring our players together and we'll show it with show show them exactly what we want to do as far as from the game plan, the execution that we want. And so so they can re, you know refamiliarize themselves with exactly who Memphis is now and what they're doing. All right, any other questions? All right, guys. Oh, we'll go back to uh, Trace. Coach, uh, Darius Johnson, Ty Freeman came up big for you in this game. Talk about what you saw from them. Kind of what, you know, DG was saying and Darius Perry was saying, you know, you know our depth is, has been a strength of ours. And we expect guys to step up. We know we have good players, and, and I think we saw that again tonight. Tonight it was DJ making some plays for us. Ty gave us a huge lift in the first half and, and continued to be aggressive in the second half. And that's what we expect from those guys. Someone is, always has a chance to, to make some good plays for us. And tonight, I thought both of those guys did, and, and they should. They're, they're no longer freshmen anymore. This is at the end of a, a season. These guys are older players now. So we should expect them to come out and, and make those type of contributions. And one more, Coach, you split with Memphis. What was the difference in that loss at Memphis? You played much better in the home win. Uh, the difference was I, I thought they, I thought they played well. I thought they got healthy. They had some guys kind of returned that we hadn't played against that year. I think Williams was one of them, and so we weren't as familiar with him this season because he, you know, he wasn't in our first game. Uh, I thought he gave them some good energy. He gave him a huge lift. He's a he's a veteran. I had been with them last year when they won the NIT championship, so he has a lot of experience. And I thought he gave them a big lift. And so uh, now we're more familiar. We'll, we'll familiarize ourselves again. I said more we're watching tape in, in our preparation. But they're a very good basketball team. They're experienced. They play well. They have a lot of talent. But so are we. And uh, we're excited about the challenge of competing against them tomorrow. Thank you, Coach. All right, one more question for the room. You talk about depth, and you're going to need everybody against Memphis. What's the status of Mayhem for tomorrow? Uh, man status is still, you know, day to day for us. You know, I'm not sure exactly, you know, I we'll have to wait till the trainer you know, explains to me exactly where he is and what he's doing. I don't want to say something that I don't know because uh, he, he's, he's getting to a point where he's close. It just, he, he's, I'm not sure if he's quite there yet, but I don't want to say something that I don't know until I talk to the trainer. All right. Thank y'all. All right, we have South Florida coach Brian Gregory, sophomore Russell Chiwa, and freshman Caleb Murphy. We will have coach give his opening statement first, and then we'll open for questions inside the room. For those of you that are on the Zoom call, if you want to raise your hand, we'll call upon you guys individually. 
Um, but coach, if you want to open things up for us. Our hard fought uh, game uh, between two teams that obviously competed very, very intensely for 40 minutes um, and give them credit. They made a couple key plays at uh, critical times, but we wanted to make sure that we did a good job of uh, defensively stopping them in transition. I thought we did a good job of that. We wanted to do a great job on the glass and we did. Um, wanted to make things difficult for their uh, scoring guys on the perimeter. And I thought uh, we did a pretty good job of that, especially in the, in the second half. Um, but they made some, like I said, some, some critical, critical plays down the stretch. And so did we, we just had two good looks there at the end and just weren't able to put it in. Proud of the way our guys fought and competed, uh, but it just wasn't enough uh, this afternoon or this evening. So um, give them credit. Uh, obviously, the, the, some of their players, as I said, made some big, big plays for them. Um, but I, I, I thought our guys fought and competed and uh, did a lot of good things. Both these guys played very good games at 15 and eight for Caleb and, um, Double double again for for Russell. Um, you know, just really two guys that have really blossomed and and had great years for us. All right, questions from inside the room. If you want to raise your hand, we'll get a microphone over to you. Coach, could you walk us through that last play? Obviously, the two looks for Corey and one for Javon. Just tell us what the play call was and how the how the play panned out. Yeah, you know, with, with only being down two, uh, we just went to spread the court and, and put the ball in Caleb's hand, and he made a great decision. He took – draw three guys to him and kicked it out for a really good look for Corey. He had just made a 17-footer from that same spot um, and just, you know, kind of rimmed out. And then great effort and intensity on the, on the glass there to tip it out. Uh, Russ was in there banging. We tip it ball out, and Corey made a really good play in making an extra pass to Javon, who's hit two or three of those similar shots, game-winning shots, um, and it was right there, you know, and unfortunately just not able to get it done. But I thought our guys, um, you know, in the, the possession before, being down three, we didn't need a three on that one. They executed really well. Caleb got to the basket, had a good look, and because of the penetration, the help came over. That led, led us to getting an offensive rebound and a putback. And then you're in the foul game, they miss one, and then you have a chance to, to tie it. Or in our case, we had a chance to win it on two pretty good looks. Uh, so as we've noticed over the season, uh, the team sometimes struggles coming out of the half to kind of match the pace of the other team. After those first four minutes, um, you guys kind of responded three consecutive baskets made. Could you tell me how you thought the team responded to uh, something that's become a pattern over the season? Yeah, you know, I, again, I, I thought that, that uh, there was a little uh, – dip in our defensive uh, execution to start the second half. And again, and then we talked about it and the guys really responded because we weren't scoring. I thought we had to dip on the defense. And then they kind of regrouped and did a very good job after that of making sure that we were still playing our, our defense. Again, you know, you out rebound the team 49 to 36 and you hold them to 36% from the field. Now they did shoot 10 to 22 from the three. So it was a three point shot again, that was the, the difference in the game. And we gave up, you know, two in the, or two or three, two in the last four possessions of the game. Johnson hit a big one at the top of the key. And then obviously Perry hit the one on the right wing. So um, I thought, again, our, our guys responded. Uh, we were down six or down seven. We got, multiple stops in a row and got some transition baskets as well. And, and um, again, just the fight that the guys had was impressive. Hey coach, this is a predominantly young team. Could you just walk us through what the message was like in the locker room after that hard fought loss? Yeah, you, you know, obviously first and foremost, you, you want to address Javon Green and, and uh, the, the sacrifices and the effort that he's put forth for us this year and also recognize what a great career he's had over the five years. Um, and it's bittersweet when you, when you, it, it's an abrupt end you, as young guys, you still never think it's going to happen. And when it does, it kind of hits you square in the jaw, you know? Um, and at the same time, I, you know, talk to the guys about, uh, 
the effort and the passion that we played with over the last six weeks was really good. Just not a lot of tangible evidence, just a couple big wins for us. But at the same time, guys need to take a look and say, okay, what, what, what are areas do I need to improve in? You know, and this is, you know, a, a time now that you reflect and say, okay, I got to do this better, be it guarding the basketball, reading off the of ball screens, finishing plays, knocking down shots, free throws, whatever the case might be. Uh, so we're not in the position again where we're, you know, in games, multiple games throughout the year with eight, six, five minutes to go and not able to finish those because those little plays are the key and development and improvement is going to be very, very important for us. This is a question for all three of you guys. Um, obviously, you guys are two of the few returners from last season's team. A lot of roster turnover this season. Could you guys tell me what you guys are proud of from the team overall this season? Uh, you know, the year didn't go how we wanted to go, but we, um, you know, instead of letting it get to us and, you know, not coming to practice ready to go or just looking like just we kept our same energy. We kept going regardless of how, what our record was and how we was playing. And, you know, some of the games that I feel like we should have won, we lost, but we were still making better, good strides and improvements in a lot of areas. So I'm proud that, you know, how we just, we stuck together. And I ain't gonna say found a way, but we just stuck together through adversity, really. Yeah, um, first of all, this uh, th this was the whole new team. So, you know, it take time to build a team. And we did a pretty good job with the chemistry, like how we came together um, every day, how we approach the parties. So I think, it was pretty good, you know. We learned from this to get better and better. Yeah, I can't say, you know, um, cause I've been, been on both sides of the stick, you know, winning and losing. We learned a lot from this year. So we definitely, everybody on the team learned a lot of lessons this year. So I think, you know, the message that we send on a daily basis is if you, you know, go about and do things the right way every single day and, and give great effort and have great focus, and, and you said we're young. So there's times where we're not as consistent in those two areas as you need to be. And that comes from experience. You know what I mean? Um, that, that I tell the guys, there's two results usually. You win games or you learn stuff that if you really embrace it, it's gonna help you win down the road. And I thought our guys every day, you know, came to practice didn't let the win or loss the night before or two nights before stop us from continuing trying to, trying to improve, you know? Um, I think Caleb over the last two weeks has had his highest assist total in, in games, eight again today, eight points, two turnovers. You saw the development of Russell uh, from about the sixth, seventh game mark of, the, of our league till now. Um, Outside of maybe Josh Carlton, he's been the most productive big guy in the in the league. You know what I mean? And you're just seeing the confidence grow and 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 all that. And you can't do that unless you bring it every single day. You know what I mean? You can't do that unless you bring it every single day. And it's hard. You know what I mean? It's it's hard. But give these guys credit because they kept doing it. All right, we're gonna go to the guest on the Zoom. Uh, we're gonna go first to Leo. Coach, you didn't take a timeout at the end, but that's a double-edged sword. Yeah, you can set up a play, but they can also change their defense. Is that why you just ran it at them? Because you knew they had to scramble? We, we had talked about it in the timeout before, what we wanted to get into without using the timeout. And, um, you know, Murphy got to the basket on the one, which was exactly what we wanted to do. And then we talked about probably – whoever drove the ball, most likely Caleb, was going to have to make a play for somebody because they were going to converge on the him. And he made a really good read in finding Corey open in the corner. All right, other question, Leo? Uh, we we uh, it muted for a second. Not Not hearing you, Leo. Coach, this game is a microcosm of your season, isn't it? Yes, you know, uh, you know, we 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 fought, we scrapped. Um, I thought the last 
three or four possessions in the first half uh, hurt us a little bit, you know, um, but that guys bounced back and kept fighting. Um, again, you can't give them credit for, you know, making the, the threes, but our overall defense, you know, you, you, you can't complain about an effort and a, and a fight if you hold a team as, as potent as they are offensively to 36% and you out rebound them by 13. You know, one of the things that we got to Leo get much better at is we had 17 offensive rebounds, but only sent 10 second chance points. We got to, we got to turn our effort. And this is what you, you know, kind of what the point you're making, the effort and the attitude that we approach things with didn't always create tangible results. Uh, 17 offensive rebounds for only 10 points. They, they had seven offensive rebounds, had the same amount of points. So, you know, we give a great effort, but now we just need to finish some of those plays. And that's the next step for us to take. All right, we're going to go to, oh, go uh, we're going to go to Will Turner. Hey, this one's for Caleb. Um, on Darius Perry's last uh, three-pointer, it looked like Jameer kind of got lost on, on a screen. And, and I saw you had your back turned to the play until the very last second. If you could walk me through kind of that last screen for, for Perry when he made that game-winning three. Uh, I was kind of just trying, like, trying to focus on the ball, trying to be in the help um, at the X, you know, in the middle. And at the last second, I seen – him set that flare screen for uh for Perry and and he shot it out. I ain't gonna say I knew it was going in, but I was just like, damn, but so simple mistake. And you brought up a great point about being on the you know both sides winning and losing. You won a lot of games during your time at Grayson High, and um you know for you just if you could expand kind of on those lessons that you've learned being on the other side of that and what it takes to you know build resiliency and things like that to to be a better player. Um, one thing I can say is that, um, honestly, I don't even know. I'm sorry. My head is I'm sorry. I got you, Caleb. And coach, one for you, uh, obviously just a, you know, not the year that you wanted to have, but just with so many new guys, what's just your ultimate biggest takeaway from, from the year that was? I think again, in, in this, in particular with the, you know, you look at the non-conference schedule that we, that we put together with some of the teams that we played, obviously Auburn and Florida and BYU and Wyoming and, and um, you know, you had a pretty tough non-conference schedule. And obviously this league, as I always say, never gets enough credit um, for anybody to be talking about Memphis, Houston, or SMU not being securely in just hasn't watched not only our league, but the rest of the country play. Cause th those three teams are definitely NCAA caliber teams. And, and not only that, those three teams are all capable of winning multiple games in our league. Um, with that being said, um, it, is a, it is a difficult league not to have multiple upperclassmen that have played years in your program. And we're gonna have to make, make sure that as a program, we understand that, but in this day and age, sometimes it's going to be difficult to do. Um, just have that that upperclassmen that have been through the, the 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 battles with you and know exactly what needs to be done. Um, so I thought, you know, the the fight was there, but at at times the the experience and the um, understanding of you know critical plays just because there there was a lack of um, continuity and and senior leadership and upperclassmen leadership guys who have been through those battles before um, you know last year was a very abbreviated not only practice but regular season schedule when you when you lose 35 days in the middle of the year due to a covid pause both these guys were obviously their development and their experience was greatly impacted because of that. Um, but it is something that teams are going to have to look at and go through right now. And hopefully we'll be able to build on some of the things that we did well and, and, you know, become that team where um, these close games that we have not been able to finish 
you know, next year you're able to, to, to finalize those games and make the plays. You know, we call them winning plays. We call it winning time the last eight minutes of the game. You got to make some plays during that time. And we've made some, but we just have not made enough. Thank you. All right. Thank any you. other questions? Brian? All right. Thanks, guys.